بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In this episode of the Risalat Program 2024, we will talk about the final pillar of Islam, which is Hajj or pilgrimage. Hajj means traveling for the purpose of visiting Kaaba, the sacred house of Allah in Mecca, to perform the rites or manasik, which are the actions and the words reported in the accounts of the Prophet ﷺ's Hajj. Peace and blessings be upon him. The rites include Tawaf, which is the circumambulation around the Kaaba seven times, and also Sa'i, or walking between the hills of Safa and Marwa seven times, and standing at Arafah, stone in the Jamrat, and so on. According to the correct view, Hajj was made obligatory in the ninth year of Hijrah, which was the year of delegations or Am al Wafud, in which Surah Al Imran was revealed, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, the meaning is, and Hajj to the Kaaba is a duty that mankind owes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to those who can afford the expenses. So it's not obligatory uh, upon everybody, only to those who can afford the expenses. When we look into the purpose of the obligatory ruling of this worship, Hajj, there are many. The first is spreading and actualization of monotheism. Second, remembrance of Allah. The third one is, is Hajj is a symbol of unity in Islam. Fourth, to remind Muslims of the hereafter. The fifth purpose we would like to highlight here is to train people to be humble and modest in their everyday life. There are some important points we need to know about Hajj. The first one is, one should keep away from evil, sin, and unjust disputes during Hajj. The reward for such a person is nothing but paradise. Abu Hurairah uh, he said uh, that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, peace be upon him, uh, has said, whoever does Hajj for the sake of Allah and does not have sexual relations uh, with his wife, a commit sin or a dispute unjustly during Hajj, will come back like the day he, his mother gave birth to him. Abu Hurairah anhu is uh, also reported to have said that Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Umrah is an expiation of sins for the time between it and the previous Umrah. And then accepted Hajj is no lesser reward than paradise. Another important point to note here is that Hajj is equivalent for Jihad for women. And the last point in this regard that I would like to mention here is that Hajj wipes out sins before it. Amr ibn Asr anhu has said uh, that the Messenger uh, uh, has uh, said that Hajj wipes out whatever sin that the person who did the Hajj has done before it. Now let's learn how Hajj is performed. Hajj can be performed in three ways. The first is Hajj Ifrad which means doing the Hajj rituals only. The second is Hajj Qiran, which is combining Hajj and Umrah in one worship. The third is Hajj Tamattu, which most of the ulama say that it's the best way to do Hajj. Hajj Tamattu means you will be doing uh, an Umrah separately and the worship of Hajj or the rituals of Hajj separately. as two separate acts of worship. So let's explain how Hajj Tamattu is performed. The pilgrim first performs Umrah during the month of Hajj, that is by entering into Ihram with the intention of performing Umrah only. Upon arrival in Mecca, the pilgrim performs Tawaf and Sa'i and then cuts or shaves his hair, exiting the state of Ihram. And then he can wear any cloth he likes, all those things that were made haram due to Ihram are halal for him, permissible for him. On the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, the pilgrim enters into Ihram again, this time with the intention of performing Hajj. This eighth day of Dhul Hijjah is the day of Tarwiyah or Yom al Tarwiyah as said in the Arabic language. Uh, he proceeds to Mina after offering uh, Fajr prayer in Makkah and uh, reach Mina before the Hur prayer. During travel, recite Talbiyah frequently. Talbiyah is Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik Labbaik La Sharika Laka Labbaik. 
inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak the translation is i have responded to you o allah i have responded to you o allah you have no partners in worship or, or whatsoever uh, verily all praise blessings and dominions are yours you have no partners in worship or whatsoever after reaching Mina of Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha prayer of the 8th day of Dhul Hijjah and the Fajr prayer of the 9th day of Dhul Hijjah. Dhuhr, Asr and Isha prayer are each shortened to two rakah, that is Qasr. All these prayers to be offered in their respective time. No need to jamra and uh, you have to stay overnight in Mina. And by that, the first day of Hajj is complete. The second day of Hajj, which is a day of Arafah, 9th of Dhul Hijjah, which is one of the most important days of Hajj. You have to offer prayer in uh, Mina, that is Fajr prayer, and remain in Mina until the uh, sunrise of the ninth day of Sul Hijjah. After sunrise, leave for Arafat. During the journey, keep reciting Talbiyah, Takbir, and also you have to make dua. The best dua you can do is La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. In Arafat, after Zawal, that is uh, starting time of the prayer, afternoon prayer, the Imam will deliver the sermon or khutbah in Masjid al Namira. After the sermon, Zuhur, that is afternoon and Asr prayer, will be offered and combined uh, Zuhrain prayer, that is Asr and Zuhur, that is afternoon prayer at the same time. Make sure that you stay within the boundaries of Arafat till the sunset. Keep remembering and glorifying Allah and do supplications for forgiveness. After sunset, do not offer Maghrib prayer and leave for Muzdalifa reciting the Talbiyah, glorifying and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon reaching Muzdalifa, Maghrib and Isha prayers will be offered combined at Isha time. Now you can pick pebbles for Jamarat next day. The size of the pebbles should be uh, like the size of chickpea. You can also uh, pick the pebbles after Fajr prayer next day. Stay overnight in Muzdalifa. You should supplicate to Allah as much as possible when you stay overnight in Muzdalifa. And by that, the second day of Hajj is completed. Third day of Hajj, which is the biggest day of Hajj, is in Arabic it's, it is said, Yawm al Hajj al Akbar, the biggest day of Hajj, um, is given this name as most of the rituals of Hajj is done in this day. In Muzdalifa of our Fajr prayer, it is time. Continue with Takbir, Tasbih, Talbiyah and engage yourself in Dua. Remain in Muzdalifa till sunrise. After sunrise, depart from Mina. Keep reciting Talbiyah. And after reaching Mina, go to Jamarat. Jamarat al-Aqaba with seven stones. Jamarat al-Aqaba is the last and biggest pillar of the three stone sites of Jamarat. You can stop reciting Talbiyah before throwing the first one. Now do Rami by throwing Seven stones at Jamrat al-Aqaba, the biggest Jamrat, reciting Allahu Akbar with every throw. On this day, only this Jamrat or Jamrat al-Aqaba will be pelted or stoned. After the Ramyu, pilgrims will now proceed to sacrifice an animal. After sacrificing the animal, shave your head or trim your hair. Shaving, however, is preferred. Women will cut like an inch of their hair. After shaving or trimming of the hair, you are partly come out of the state of ihram. Now you can put on a usual dress, however intimacy between spouses is not allowed. Now go to Masjid al-Haram in Makkah to perform Tawaf al-Ifadah of Kaaba. Tawaf is ifada that is done or performed as usual, that is seven rounds around the Kaaba. Prophet also has prayed Dhuhr prayer in Makkah, that is Kaaba. After tawaf is offered, two rakat of tawaf behind Maqam Ibrahim is performed. However, if you could not find the place uh, behind Maqam Ibrahim, you can pray anywhere in Masjid al-Haram. Now perform sa'yu of Safa and Marwa. After performing uh, sa'yu, you can drink a, a water of Zamzam. Uh, Zamzam water is very beneficial to you and it is a sunnah to drink Zamzam uh, water in this uh, place. Now go back to Mina and spend the night in Mina. Don't stay in Makkah overnight. And by that, the third day of Hajj is complete. 
the fourth, fifth, and sixth day of Hajj, which is called in Arabic Ayyam uh, al-Tashriq, you have to stay in Mina till Zawal time, that is of a Zuhur prayer, or afternoon prayer, and go to all three Jamrat for stoning. First go to Jannat al uh, that is uh, the smallest Jamra, throw seven pebbles, uh, reciting Takbir, uh, for each pebble, and then you can make Dua. Any Dua you, want, you wish to, you can make. After stoning small jamra, then you have to go to the middle jamra. Also, you have to throw seven pebbles uh, to the middle jamra, uh, reciting Allahu Akbar with each pebble, and then you can make any dua you want. Finally, go to the last and big jamra, that is jamratul kubra uh, or jamratul aqaba, recite Allahu Akbar and throw seven pebbles. You don't have to make dua after throwing uh, to jamratul aqaba. After completing the Ramyu, you must stay in Mina and you have to repeat the same rituals on the fifth and sixth day. However, if you wish to leave Mina on the fifth day, you can do so after Ramyu. If you leave Mina on the 12th of Zul Hijjah, which is the fifth day, perform Tawaf al Wada of Kaaba in Makkah. There is no need to wear Ihram to perform uh, this Tawaf al Wada. Also, no Sa'i is required. This is the last and final ritual of Hajj. And at this stage, all the obligatory rituals of Hajj are completed. Females who are in their menses are excused from performing Tawaf al wada After Tawaf al wada you have to leave Makkah as soon as possible, as it is the last thing you have to do in Makkah. If you wish to stay in Makkah longer, then delay Tawaf al wada to the day of traveling. By that, you have now completed the Hajj. Now let's dive into the lessons we get from Hajj. When a person travels to carry out the rituals of Hajj, he is reminded of the journey to Allah and the hereafter. Traveling is a kind of torment, and the same is true for the journey of hereafter. Uh, when the pilgrim puts uh, on the two garments of Ihram, he cannot help but be reminded uh, of the shroud in which he will be wrapped after he dies. When he says the Talbiyah, Rabbaik Allahumma Labbaik, he means that he has responded to his Lord. So how can he insist on sinning after that? When he gives up haram things during his haram and keeps himself busy with the Talbiyah and Zikr, this shows him how the Muslim should be. He trains himself to give up some things which are in principle halal, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden them to him at this time, during his haram. So how can he violate the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing things which are haram all the time? When he does tawaf, he is reminded of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who built the house to be a place of sanctuary for humankind and a place of safety. When he drinks the water of Zamzam, he is reminded of the blessing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon humankind in the form of this blessed water from which millions of people have drunk throughout the long ages, but it has never dried up. He is encouraged to make dua when he drinks, uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, the water of Zamzam is for whatever it is drunk for. When he does Sa'ya, uh, running between Safa and Marwa, he is reminded of the trial endured by Hajar, uh, the mother of Ismail Alaihi Salam, and the wife of Khalil, Ibrahim, may Allah exalt the mention, and how she ran back and forth between Safa and Marwa searching for water, which would save her from thirst and also her son Ismail alayhi salam. When a person remembers this struggle and patience of the woman, it makes it easier for him to bear his own problems. The standing of Wukuf in Arafah reminds the pilgrim of the crowd of people in the day of gathering. When he throws the pebbles at Jamrat, the Muslim trains himself to obey Allah unquestioningly. And this act is related to the pelting of shaitan during the time of Ibrahim salam. When he slaughters his sacrifice, O Hadi, he is reminded of the great event when our father Ibrahim, may Allah exalt his mention, submitted to the command of Allah to sacrifice his only son Ismail salam after he had grown up and become a help to Ibrahim alayhi salam. The one who responds to the call of Allah will have joy and happiness, and this joy cannot be known by anyone except those who have trusted the sweetness of obedience. 
when he has finished performing all the rituals of Hajj as they were prescribed by Allah and in the manner that Allah loves, he has the hopes that uh, his Lord will forgive him all his sins, as mentioned earlier in this episode. When he comes back to his wife and children and experiences the joy of meeting them again, this reminds him of the greater joy of meeting them in paradise. Now let's look into the lessons from the farewell sermon of the Prophet. The farewell sermon is the sermon delivered by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Arafat during the final Hajj. This sermon delivered over 1400 years ago is a timeless beacon of guidance, unity and justice offering lessons that continue to resonate within us today. The first lesson is the sanctity of life, property and honor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began his sermon by emphasizing the inviolability of life, property and honor. He said, Verily, your blood, your property and your honor are as sacred as the sanctity of this day of yours, in this month of yours, in this town of yours. This a profound statement undercovers the importance of respecting the rights and dignity of others. In a world where conflict and injustice often prevail, this lesson calls upon us to uphold justice, peace, and mutual respect in all our dealings. The second uh, lesson is equality and brotherhood. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has declared all people are equal like the teeth of a comb. All of you are descendants of Adam, and Adam was created from dust. There is no superiority for an Arab over a non-Arab, or for a white person over a black person, except in the matters of piety. This powerful message of equality and brotherhood is a cornerstone of Islamic teachings. It reminds us that in the eyes of Allah, all human beings are equal, and the only thing that is important in the eyes of Allah is taqwa or piety. The third lesson is women's rights. In this sermon, the Prophet ﷺ addressed the rights and responsibilities of men and women in marriage, highlighting the importance of treating women with kindness and respect. He said, Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning women. They are your helpmates. They have some rights on you and you have some rights on them. This was a revolutionary statement in a time when women were often marginalized and oppressed. The Prophet's words remind us of the importance of upholding the dignity and rights of women in all aspects of life. The fourth lesson is the importance of Quran and Sunnah. The Prophet emphasized the importance of Quran and Sunnah and adhering to it, stating, I leave behind me two things, the Quran and my example, which is the Sunnah. And if you follow this, you will never go astray. This timeless advice serves as a reminder that the Quran and Sunnah are our ultimate sources of guidance, providing us with the principles and values needed to navigate the challenges of life. As we conclude this episode, we hope it has enriched your understanding of this profound act of worship in Islam that is Hajj. And may our knowledge of Islam continue to grow and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the journey for all Muslims aspiring to perform Hajj. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.